So good, good afternoon beautiful people. It is, I'm not sure if this is Technical Tuesday or just a vlog. Anyway, we are in Valencia and we've been here a week and we've got about a month left to go before we haul out, which basically means that I've got to start doing the jobs, end of season jobs that I do every end of season. So today, uh, for your entertainment is varnishing and woodwork, which you're gonna think, God, it's like a craft program from the 70s and 80s. But it's important because, Essentially, we live on a boat which where the saloon and a part of a lot of the cockpit is there's a lot of wood and it needs maintenance, especially the varnish. There's a lot of chips and dinks that occur. There's a lot of water splash damage in the galley. And it's just time to get all that kind of end of season work done. So today what we're going to do is strip back all the varnish that we're not happy with. And then over the next couple of days, we will varnish uh, the, the, the raw wood. The reason we don't varnish on the same day as doing the sanding is that if you do varnishing uh, on the same day as sanding you end up with a lot of sawdust or or varnish dust back on your wood. So today we're going to strip everything down. We're going to strip it down with different grades of sanding paper. We're then going to wash it all down and then we're going to leave it all to settle for probably a day or two then we'll start varnishing different varnish, different types of varnish for different areas. Hi high strength polyurethane varnish for um, high traffic areas and kind of like a spray varnish which has got a slightly better finish in my opinion for the kind of like bigger non high traffic areas. So that's that, so I'm gonna get on with that. I've got some fantastically dirty work clothes on although this is a beautiful t-shirt from Tula, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, we'll get on from there. So uh, this is our varnish day. start with a little mouse sander. Um, I'm starting with 180 grit sandpaper. You don't need to go any coarser for, for, for varnish work. And I'll move between 180 to 240 to 400 and then 600 grit just to get the varnish off. Now, because I've done this work before on this boat, I only use this method for um, the high traffic areas where I want to take a little bit more off where I'm just scuffing up other areas to apply another coat of varnish or taking out hairline um, very fine scratches, I tend to only use four and 600 grit. So what I'm gonna do is move around, there's some water damage on, on these areas here. So I'm gonna start with this, it's noisy, it's messy, we'll kind of like get some sawdust everywhere, but as I said, it just means that it needs to be done end of season. We haven't done this bit for a couple of four years, so it's gonna be the uh, first time for a while that we've done this stuff. Day two, day two of varnishing. So last night I did two coats of polyurethane varnish on on the kind of like these high traffic areas around here. Uh, then sanded it down with 600 grit sandpaper, just really lightly, just to make it smooth again. And then this morning before we went out, I did another coat. So I'll do another, and then well, I'm now sanding between layers. So that's the high traffic area. Um, and then there's just little things like this rail here. And this rail is above our cooker and I just think over the last seven years the grease has affected the varnish a little bit. So what I've done today is I've lightly sanded this down with, it's like a sponge with wet dry on it so it's really fine. And obviously when it's wet it's finer than when it's dry so if you use it as a, as a wet sponge. And then I am using um, some kind of satin spray varnish um, which isn't as hard wearing as the polyurethane stuff but it gives a better finish so I'm literally just 
doing a coat, leaving it an hour, doing a coat, leaving it an hour, doing a coat, leaving it an hour. And as you can see, I've masked the entire boat up. So I'm just about to do another coat of this. Um, and so what I do is coat of varnish, leave it for an hour because it takes only 20 minutes to set, but I give it an hour. It's also really hot in here, so it sets a little bit faster, or will go off a little bit faster. Then a very light sanding, and then just um, a wet rag or a damp cloth just to get off any excess. And you just keep doing this over and over again. So sand, sand, wet rag, let it dry, coat of varnish, and I'll do that three times just to get that up to scratch. And then um, this part down here, this high traffic area, I've done the edge in polyurethane, and I'm gonna just give a light sanding to the base just to kind of, um, kind of take the varnish a bit better, and I will use spray varnish for that. That's it, that's the plan. So, 15 seconds of taking this and a third coat, and it smells bad because it's um, solvent based. That's it. Voila! So it's uh, another day of maintenance. And as you can see, it's well, a lot of sanding, a lot of polishing. Again, I kind of always try and keep this boat in just about show condition or kind of as it's come out of factory condition, I think, what's the word? It's not fact, anyway. Mm -mm. So basically today's job, we had some condensation build up. I think it was in one of, uh, I can't remember where it was, probably in Charleston, some condensation build up between the blind and the wood frame of the window. And what it's done is just caused some mottling on the wood, which, it's completely 100% cosmetic, but it annoys me because I can see that it's slightly different. Anyway, today what we've done is we've masked all this up and I'm going to kind of just um, sand the, uh, the varnish back to, to bare wood and then build up um, some coats of varnish just to kind of blend it all in and feather it in again. And so, you know, this is, this is just today's job. It's Varnishing everything down, I start with a 180 grit sandpaper, then move to 280, then to 600. And between those sands, you put some water down, you kind of just um, kind of wet the wood. Wetting the wood does a couple of things, it removes excess sawdust. And the second thing it does, it makes the wood grain swell a little bit. So when it contracts again, you get a better finish. And then what we'll do is we'll varnish that and polish the varnish off. And that's another job done. So that's my job for today. Teresa's job is to use a uh, it's quadruple zero gauge wire wall bison wax just to polish um, all the woodwork. So all the woodwork's got to have kind of like really kind of high quality wax put into it, buffed into it and then and buffed off. And that just, protect, just protects the wood a little bit, gives it a really nice finish. <laughs> Today, we are going to put some use to the roll of charcoal grey sunbrella that I've been carrying around on this boat for the last 5,000 miles. We have just wear and tear on our spray, on our spray, what is it, as our um, sail cover, cover bag. And we've patched it before, and it's literally just where lines have kind of rubbed against it and caused chaff, or it's chaffed through. So what we're going to do is just professionally completely repair these two sections. So I think we'll just strip out the bits will template it should theoretically be the same size on both sides um, that's the theory the practice it won't be the same size so what i'm going to do is template it and then um, put two new panels on and then redo all the stitching where it's broken just to make it look better and obviously because the stitching has more than simply a cosmetic thing going so today's job is to restitch the sail bag um, make two big new panels for it and just do a full set of repairs on it so that it kind of looks as good as new. So it's a day of screaming at the sail right um, on the pontoon. Uh, so we're looking forward to that, aren't we? Yes, very much. <laughs> Always. Always looking forward to that. All right? Yes. So, sorry, I'm a bit confused. What parts are you replacing? So if you look at this, here, are you filming? I am. So here, this was stitched up just as a, as a field repair. Yeah. And then there's a, it's just literally where 
you know, you have a halyard that rubs against it for a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, so here and here, and here and here, there's just some fat points. Yeah, but uh, what are you replacing? What are you replacing? Literally, I'm going to take make a panel that goes from here, yeah. I think from here, all the way down to here. So, so are you replacing this panel here? No, actually, I'm not sure whether I'm going to replace that panel or just go over the top of it. Because that's just decorative, isn't it? It's just because there's... Yeah, but I don't see any point to take it off because it's actually protective as well. Yeah. So I'm probably just going to get panels and replace the panels for these two sections. What, and then put the Sutherley 38 sign back on? I was going to, but the problem is that part of the problem is actually that there's wear on here. Yeah, exactly. So I was actually going to just take it off. I think just take it off. You've done this, haven't you? That's... Yeah, so that's got to come off. This was done with the old stone machine. We did this in Antigua and we couldn't quite find the material. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing how... This is like, what? Seven, seven years, years old? It doesn't fade. It's amazing. That's why it's so bloody expensive. It just yeah. does not fade. Is that Nick? It's one of those things that cross the Atlantic. Ahí tenemos a esas cuatro jugadoras. Las... It's one of those boats that um, sailed to Bermuda because there was a replica of the boat in Bermuda. It's like a 16th century something galleon. So yeah, there's a point out that there's a woman getting there. Where? All these people, all these oh, yeah. of people getting or themselves playing the. Playing the uh, invisible banjo. Playing the invisible banjo. In fact, there's more. I can see another one over there. They look, they look like you know the um, they like are Egyptian. Greek. No, they're Greek. ancient Greek. Yeah, ancient Greek. And you can tell that from the beards and hairstyles. Oh, there's another one there. Yeah, she's. Yeah, yeah she's enjoying it. In fact, those two are in the same position, which really, although I don't know what they're doing here. Her foot is like right in the middle of his. I think bits. it's the other side of him, babe. Oh yeah, I can see his willy. She's like kicking him in the bollocks. <laughs> The Me Too movement comes to Valencia. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this guy doing? Oh, she's got a pair of tits. Oh, what's she doing? I think she's frigging herself with a strap. <laughs> so just as I was uh, about to do a nice time lapse shot before, when we were at the port, uh, the security came up and told us that we had to stop filming. Nick was about to fly the drone. And uh, yeah, we had to stop. So here we are at uh, the science and art village, I guess. City. The city. City of science, city and, of art. science and art. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's, I mean, the modern architecture is absolutely beautiful for one. And it's what a nice else? part of the world. It's very nice, yeah. Well, let's, go and, um, let's go and explore. Let's go and explore, yeah. Let's go and see what this place has to offer. Wow, is that you multitasking, I see? Nah, crash. <laughs> so we're inside the, uh, whatever this kind of creation is. And it's, um, yeah, a garden centre. It's really, really beautiful. And there's obviously something going on because there is a load of families lining up behind me to get into somewhere. So I'm glad that's not us. Um, but yeah, how pretty. Tell you what, Valencia is charming me more and more every single day. Trying to wake up from a dream It's harder than it seems Birds are flying all around Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button.